Well, hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Pastor Mike here. Welcome to the Midweek Meditation. It's on more the back half of uh, what we would call midweek, uh, just because uh, today's been a, today. This week has been a bit much. Uh, I had class for most of the week, um, you know, dealing with uh, kids with a couple hiccups here and there. Um, not actual hiccups, but, you know, all very busted hand, those sorts of things. So it's been wild. It's been busy, but I'm back in the office, back. Uh, back at it, uh, and now recording the midweek meditation. And I tell you what, there is a lot coming up. Uh, there is a lot of great text. There is a there's a lot. There was a lot. There is a lot. I wish I could just have a sermon that says that, but that's not how it works. But let's get down to business. Um, this week, the texts. Uh, there's a very very interesting one that we have in Luke. Again, a lot of these texts are, you know, kind of life lessons, faith lessons, what does it mean to live as a Christian, you know, those sorts of things. And this is no different. It is the one where, you know, Jesus gives his parables about two guys giving alms. You know, one is this Pharisee who is praying, God, you know, thank you pretty much for making me this awesome guy. You know, I'm not like these horrible other people. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the bee's knees. You know, God, I just thank you for making me the best that ever was. I mean, that's, that's me paraphrasing the prayer, but that's kind of what's going on. And then you have this tax collector who, uh, you know, asked for mercy, compassion, all of these things. And Christ uses this parable about exalting oneself and humbling oneself. And, I mean, this is an important thing, and it's often a reality in Christianity. And the, really, the two major things that I think we as Christians in today's world need to think about, about what this text is saying, is, A, how do we understand what being exalted is and what being humbled is? And what is the world trying to tell us about that? And, you know, at this moment, I think it's good to think about what do we mean by humble and what do we mean about exalted? Because I think we often get these terms a little off. Um, I mean, even when we say pride, what do we mean by pride? You know, pride is one of the seven deadly sins. But, you know, Leo's always like, Dad, I like it when you say, it. I'm proud of you. And I've always had, you know, that weird struggle with that. When we say pride, what do we mean? Do we mean this overwhelming sense, like this Pharisee, that I'm the greatest existence? Or that I'm excited, I'm happy, I'm glad, I have this, this notion and love for this child, and I'm overjoyed that he is doing well, that he has used his gifts. You know what I mean? Both can mean pride, but they're very different, aren't they? And I think sometimes one of the big struggles we run into is how words have mutated over time. I mean, pride used to be just that horrible reality. Nowadays, I don't know if it's good or bad or indifferent. But when you say, you know, I have pride in my work, um, there's nothing wrong with that. Having a healthy, sober joy and understanding that you did a good job is great. Um, doing a mediocre job and thinking you're, you know, the best there ever was is not. And that is a subtle and important difference. Also on the other end, what does it mean to be humble? Um, I mean, humble in, in deeply the theological sense is, is really understanding that you don't need to exalt yourself. You're going to have a sober assessment and even internally maybe have that joy of doing it. I don't think humble people think they're horrible. I think humble people are more, I don't know, maybe go with the term internally motivated or internally psyched up about something. You know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy how my garden turned out. I made a garden for me. It matches what I want. I'm happy. I don't need to brag to anybody. I don't need to show it off. But I can be happy with it without having to broadcast it, which is, you know, fascinating with um, social media nowadays. Humble sometimes, I think, when we use it a lot nowadays, is, is the concept of a doormat. That, you know, humble people, I mean, you know, those are the people that just think they're horrible and let people walk all over them. I don't think that's what Scripture is doing at all. So that's kind of what this midweek meditation is about. 
when we approach this text, when we approach other texts, when we approach these things, sometimes we need to be mindful of what the word is actually saying. And that's not bad because words change over time. Um, one of my favorites is the word nice. Nice is, is a word that nowadays means someone's courteous, um, compassionate, you know, hey, that's a nice guy, you know. But it really shares the same root as naive from Latin. It really, traditionally when it started to be used, it was like, well, you know, that guy's, you know, <laughs> he's a nice guy. He's not the sharpest cookie in the drawer, if you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I meant to do a mixed metaphor. Um, so even in this moment, when Jesus is talking about somebody exalting and humbling themselves, he's not saying that we need to be a doormat, that we need to let people walk all over us. That's not what it's saying. I think it's saying that we do not need to always put our self-promotion first, and that having self-promotion as our life's goal removes us from understanding our own brokenness, our faults, our, dare I say, sins, and thus being able to ask for forgiveness, looking for growth, asking to be better. In many ways, I think about it with the realities of your teaching or coaching. I know when I talk about the Eighth Commandment with confirmation students, um, I talk about having a good coach is really, really being good with the Eighth Commandment. Because you're coaching people. And you are called to speak in a way that points out shortcomings, faults in playing style or teamwork, but in a way that calls them to improve and not shut down. And unfortunately, I think in our world nowadays, any form of criticism, even positive and constructive, causes people to shut down. And I think it's a two-way street. One, we're more apt to shut down, and people don't know how to speak well. People don't know how to speak courteously anymore. I mean, it, half of, I think, our problems right now is people don't communicate in a compassionate manner. And you can say to a young man, you know, your, 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 your footwork may be on soccer or even in football. You know, it's not where it needs to be. Let's work on that. You're not saying the kid's horrible. You're not saying the kid's evil. You're saying, here's something where we can grow. And pointing it out is key. And that is in many ways what the text does. The text is calling us to look at ourselves. Be honest. How can we grow? And oftentimes, when we hear that, we feel too convicted. And I think we push back against God. Of, I'm not that horrible. But God's not saying that we're horrible. God's calling us into more faithfulness, into more compassion, and more like him, not a seed of judgment and harangue. Hopefully that makes sense. And that's really kind of around the text, because when we talk about what it means to be humble and exalted, uh, people might really mishear and really get caught in some of the new, new understanding of what it means to be humble. And that I would say that they need to, you know, feel they're horrible. It's not the goal. Well, blessings, brothers and sisters. Hopefully that is good grist for the mill, some stuff to think about, and a good setup for this sermon. Blessings, brothers and sisters in Christ. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.